are together again on the radio. I want to talk to you uh, this hour about women who are over the hill. The kind of women who are Hillary Clinton supporters, but I'm not talking about politics, but you know what I'm talking about. The dried up old bags, the old prunes, the ones who are past their prime, way past their prime. They're a bunch of bitter old broads. And um, every now and then I like to remind you boys that ultimately, if you're patient, ultimately, all the women who treat you like crap, the women who treat you like dirt, all the women who treat you like you're lower than dirt, the women who won't date you, the women who won't give you the time of day, the women who tell you to get lost, the women who threaten to file sexual harassment charges against you. You know who I'm talking about. One day, they're going to be over the hill. When I was a kid, I used to, uh, i got to tell you, when I was a child, I, I used to read Superman comics. I did. And not for the usual reason that kids read comic books. I read Superman comics because I saw truth in there, and and um, a truth, justice in the American way. That's right. And what I saw in there, among other things, was the uh, the kryptonite analogy. You know, Superman had all his superpowers until he was faced with kryptonite. And while that seems uh, quaint today, and it seems like uh, you know science fiction, which is of course what it was. The reality is that uh, it's a very good analogy because women have to face their kryptonite. After years of stamping their little feet, after years of being little bitches, after years of whining and crying and demanding and threatening and divorcing and taking and spending, one day, just like Superman faced kryptonite, Lex Luthor held it right in front of him and he suddenly started to practically melt. The fact is that uh, one day women hit their kryptonite. One day they're over the hill. One day they've got the turkey neck. One day they are dried up old prunes. One day the crow's feet kick in. One day the menopausal mustache kicks in. And women don't have any of that power anymore. Without saying who it is, I knew a woman who, uh, let's just say she was the mother of somebody I dated who at one time was super hot, super duper hot. And then one day, finally, she she hit kryptonite. One day she realized she couldn't marry wealthy guys anymore. She couldn't date wealthy guys anymore. She couldn't be demanding. She couldn't be stamping her little feet all the time. Because one day she finally jumped the shark. One day she finally just couldn't do it anymore. It was richly rewarding to see her like it was like a fish out of water, you know. Suddenly you ever take a fish out of water, you ever take goldfish and maybe it falls on the floor when you're trying to move it? Um I used to do that. I used to have a little goldfish and you a little net and you'd like put him in the bathtub in cold water while you would clean out his uh, his fish bowl. And then every once in a while, like, he would flop around, and he would jump out of the net, and he would land on the floor, and he'd be flopping around on the floor. That's how women get when they can't get what they want anymore, merely by, uh, you know, stamping their feet or batting their eyelashes uh, or uh, offering up uh, their bodies or whatever. They flip out. They don't know how to handle it. And I particularly enjoy that because as men, may I tell you, as men, we don't have this problem. We don't. As men, when we get older, we become more valuable. Look at me. I'm making the most money I've ever made. I've got the best job I've ever had. My God, I've got the number one radio show in the afternoon in Southern California. The most lucrative radio market in the world. I follow in the footsteps of, you know, the real Don Steele, Casey Kasem, Wink Martindale, 
all the big name radio personalities of the past. Here I am. I, I, I have this fantastic gig. My life has never been better. I've never been more important within my field. I've never been more financially successful. Life has never been so comfortable. Things have never been so lucrative. Never. Never, never. There are women who years ago should have paid more attention. There are women who should have said yes a little more often. There are women who should have said, thank you, Tom. I, I understand what you're doing with your life. I really appreciate this time with you. Instead of nagging, cajoling, harassing, trying to get me to sell my house, trying to get me to buy them crap. Instead of having a sense of entitlement, they should have said, you know what? You bring a lot to the table. Thank you for that. They should have done that, but they didn't. So now I'm worth more than ever. I travel more than ever, got more real estate than I've ever had before, more money than I've ever had before. There are women I knew in the past who still try to contact me. They would still love to get with me. They'd love to re rekindle what they think was there or revive the whole thing. Forget it. You had your cake, darling. Now eat it. Let it go to your big fat butt. That's right. Women are in their prime when they are young and hot. And as the years go on, and as they go, no, I'm not going out. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, this is not a date, okay? You can take me to dinner, but it's not a date. I imagine these women who, like, turn 50 and the wrinkles are kicking in and everything. I wonder if they have, like, in their minds, like an old movie montage of all the things they said to guys over the years, kind of going through their mind. I mean, you know those old movie montages, sometimes they'd be calendar pages, you know, ripping off a calendar, clocks, and the, the hands are going around and around and around to show time going backwards or forwards or whatever. And then you've got a montage of stuff that happened in the past. So I wonder if women ever actually have that in their minds, you know? I wonder if women now who, who finally have said no to a lot of good men, women who just sniffed at guys who sent them roses or made fun of them because they made an effort to be with them, or guys who were reliable and dependable but just weren't exciting enough, whatever. I wonder if women, once they hit 50, I wonder if women, once they turn into old prunes, I wonder if they have in their minds that, that like movie montage of their minds, and they're going back in time, and the calendar pages are ripping off, you know, March, April, May, June, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and then in their minds, it's like, no, I'm not going out with you. You don't make enough money. What are you, a jerk? Are you kidding me? I've been out with much better than you. I can do better than you. No, you know what? I already have a date for the prom. That's right. And you know what? I wouldn't go out with you anyway because you're a loser. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, ladies. You realize how many, I, I, I just wonder when women get to that old age, if they realize how many good men they've turned down. All these women who complain, where are all the good men? You know where all the good men are? You said no to them. You said no to the nice guy who wanted to take you to the prom. You said no to the guy who asked you to marry him because you thought you could do better. You said no to the guy who, uh, you know, wanted you to move in with him or... Wanted you to fall in love with him. You said no. To, you made fun of the guy, right, who sent you all those Valentine's Day cards and the balloons and the little uh, teddy bears and everything. You just said no, 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 no. And then one day you suddenly turn around and guys aren't paying attention to you anymore. <laughs> I find that so rewarding. Anytime I see these old prunes, these former bathing beauties walking around. One time I found myself at a Rod Stewart concert. Don't ask me how I ended up there. <laughs> I found myself at a Rod Stewart concert, and I, it was packed with women like this. You know, women who spent their lives hoping to hook up with rock stars. You know, they were hoping to marry the Doobie Brothers or something, and it never happened. And so there they were, you know, over the years, just trying to pick up with, uh, you know, Steven Tyler or whoever. And now finally, you know, you get to, like, uh, the 21st century, and they're at 62-year-old Rod Stewart's concert with... 
tight jeans and some T-shirt with uh, little little uh, rhinestones that say "baby" or "bb" or something, and and there they are, gray hair, grandmotherly looking, still trying to be little groupie sluts, and they end up, you know, they're going to have to marry, you know, Edgar or Oscar or you know, they're going to have to marry uh, Joe Slob or. <laughs> They're going to have to end up with the Roto Rooter man because they, they never settled for any of these guys and they finally realized they waited too long past their window of opportunity. I really enjoy seeing women suffer like that. I completely love it. And there's nothing like going to, you know, like bars in Beverly Hills, like some of these piano bars, like Maple Drive. Let's name Na- Maple Drive as a place where some of these matronly types are out there. They've been already supplanted by the trophy wives, and they are pathetically out there trying to meet new guys. Or Mastro's, the steakhouse in Beverly Hills. There's another one where the fossils come in. These women who've already been through a couple of husbands or these women who waited too long to get married. And there they are trying to tart themselves up for the guys at the bar. The oh, they're at that piano bar with Gary, the, the piano player there at Mastro's. Who, by the way, is spectacular. And if you ever get a chance to go to Mastro's, Gary is, Gary is fantastic. But yet, it's like the Museum of Natural History. These women who are gathered around his piano. I'm telling you, you think dinosaurs are extinct? Mastro's, tonight, go to the bar. <laughs> There's a brontosaurus with your name on her. Oh, yeah. Now they'll do anything. By the way, these same women who said no for 30 years, now they will do absolutely anything you want. And what's really funny about it is that uh, these women uh, take it as a, a compliment that guys want to have sex with them. When in reality, there's just no work involved. These women will just go home and spread their legs. You buy them a drink, and they're off to the races. That's right. So, uh, boys, don't jump on the first thing that moves. Don't jump on the first thing that looks pretty. Don't jump on the first thing that puts out. Because you're, you, what, you can't see the future and you are gonna be more valuable in the years to come. Do you think I could have envisioned making all this money I make and having all this success? No! Are you kidding? Uh, when I was a kid, I would have been happy to make $50,000 a year being a disc jockey. I would have been thrilled! Making a wise ass remark every eight or twelve songs and the rest of the time just segueing, you know, jingles and songs and slogans and I, I would have been perfectly happy doing that. I had no idea we'd get to this point. And you know who else had no idea we'd get to this point? Every woman I was ever with. <laughs> every woman I was ever with. All the ones who had the sense of entitlement, all the ones who didn't appreciate me. Boys, I'm telling you, you can't see the future. Who knows how successful you might be one day? Don't be giving up when you're 20, 21, 22, 25. Don't be giving up. Adolfo is playing at Masters tonight, says Dean. What happened to Gary? Gary off tonight? It's not his night. It's not Gary's night. Okay. Don't go tonight. I can go tonight, but if you want to see Gary, you'll have to go on his night. <laughs> anyway, there's nothing I love more. They're watching these women going down the tubes. <laughs> Isn't it great? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom, you are a god. You are my higher power, my friend. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. And one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Nothing I like better than watching the women who suddenly turn into old prunes. <laughs> suddenly they don't have their magic powers anymore. Here's Andrew on the Tom Likes Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Andrew. Hey, uh, a long time, first time, man. Thank you. Uh, let me tell you about this place in Orange County, guy. We, uh, me and my buddies, whenever we're bored, we go to this place. It's called Foxfire, right off the 91 in Imperial. Right. Oh, man, MILF and Cougar Central, man. They're buying you martinis. They're buying you shots trying to hook up with you because <laughs> their husbands are out of town or they have all these big old fat alimony checks. 
their kids are at vacation or whatever, man. It is awesome, bro. I love that. Dude, it, it, it is a great place to go. My buddy found it out. He was actually a valet there. Girls would be grabbing his ass, counting out of their drunk and stuff. We ended up going there. Oh, man, I think my oldest right now there is like 44, 45. Really? Divorced. Oh, man. Yeah, like one dirty martini later and she was ready to go. <laughs> Let me tell you what, man. Uh, Orange County, they you know, they got their the Mercedes and all that kind of stuff. It, it, dude, it's, it's good stuff, man. Easy picking. Foxfire. Love it. Yeah, man. Hey, can you take me out bong rip style? Here you go, Andrew. No cough. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Stephen on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Uh, no. I just got a, uh, this is a comment on that segment you had a little while ago before commercial. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that one, bro. Like, never look like for the future or something like that. I totally, I totally agree with you because over the summer I had a girlfriend. Uh, and we went out here and there, did a lot of things for two months straight over the summer. We were just banging, just nonstop, over, just in hot rooms, at her house, my house, at work, after work, whatever. You, you just basically think about it. Yeah, we did it. Finally, it came up to the last month, our fourth month together, where she had enough. But I found out that she was cheating on me with a couple of other guys from work. So it kind of bummed me out. Well, not really bummed me out, but, like, pissed me off. And I don't know what she's doing right now. I know she's going to school and stuff, and I could care less because I'm got i getting a good job right now. I'm working two jobs. I'm working at a movie theater, and I'm going to start working at a UPS. Which one so, is the good job? Uh, UPS. I see. Yeah. And what happened to college? What college are you attending? Uh, Mount Zach. Which is a community college? No, it's uh, just a regular college. What kind of college yeah. is it? Huh? It's community college. Oh, well, I guess you can say it's a community college. What degree yeah. are you studying for? Um. Now, well, what are you majoring in? Is it an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree? What is it? Uh, associates. That That's a community college. Okay, then, yeah. <laughs> so you don't even yeah. know what kind of college you're going to? No, I'm just going. <laughs> Uh huh. And uh, what is your game plan for your education? Game plan: um, do four years, go out and four years. Well, you you're at a two year college. Where are you going to go after this? After this, uh, probably to uh, UC Riverside. UC Riverside, and you're going to major in what? Um, uh, law, law and attorney. Law. Yeah. Really? Yeah, pretty big, pretty big, pretty big. But yeah. Do you have the IQ for that? Uh, kind of, not really. <laughs> Working on it. Okay. Yeah. So. You're not majoring in package delivery or something like that, are you? Mm, yeah. Well, I'm I'm into the the whole pa yeah the packaging and delivering stuff. Yeah, I'm into. That. You're into that. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I'm not into. It. I'm just. It's just for part time. Part time. And so so like, you wouldn't want to do that full time. No. Hell no. Make it hell. short. Yeah, totally, totally sure. Even though it's a union gig and it's impossible to be fired at UPS and you could work there your entire life, you wouldn't want to work there? Uh, no, because as a matter of fact, after I'm done with that, I'm going to go into law, either a lawyer or a law enforcement. You're going to be a lawyer or you're going to go into law enforcement? There's a big difference there. Yeah. But you don't know which one you want to do. No, that's the problem. That's like saying I'm going to be a cowboy or I'm going to be an Indian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is it? The uh, cowboy. Just checking. All right. All right. I, uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom. I'm sorry. Sorry. But yeah, just wanted to throw that out there. Like, yeah, I know what you mean about that earlier segment. So. You know what I mean about that earlier segment? Yeah, about being young and just doing it. Yeah, and all sudden... just doing it. I think you've had enough. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, moving along uh, to a. You ever watch those uh, sports broadcasts late at night? We now move in later into the second quarter. You know, and then. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for 
time constraints, we had to move along to the next segment. Yes. <laughs> Let's say hello here to uh, to Richard on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Richard. I think you gotta tell that guy to go watch Hannah Montana or something. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> Wouldn't want him to be my lawyer. Hell no. Hannah Montana is going to be my next trophy wife. There you go. As <laughs> soon as she's I legal. You, That's right. I want to tell you something about these uh, these broads. What I call them is they're clinging on to their youth. Yes. And it's 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 kind of sad and sorry to see. But I blame movies. No, like it's them. not. I, are you kidding? It's not sad at all. It's fantastic. Well, for them it is, at least. I, you know what? My boys were 18, 19, 20, and thinking about, you know, settling down with somebody because they, they can't find chicks to go out with, they got no game, whatever. They need to go see what's at the other end of the rainbow. They need to go see these women pathetically hanging by the piano bar <laughs> to see where, they, where these girls who are saying no to them will all end up. Well, I blame movies like The Banger Sisters, crap like that. They should have called that movie the the longest yard because Susan Sarandon's ass is about a yard long in that movie. <laughs> it's a horrible movie, and it and it gives a sense of of like empowerment for the ladies. They think, ooh, you know, we're sixty and we're young and we're hot, and it's Goldie Hawn looks all copper and bronzed up and freckly <laughs> in the chest, and just now thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what chest? <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Can you take me out Texas A&M style? Oh, Aggie style. Oh, that that might offend people if we did that. We haven't played that in a while. Oh, yeah. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. This is Bill. Is Bill from Torrance? Bill on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey there. Hey. I've got a story for you. I have lived the entire Tom Likas cycle. Tell me. And I promise you I'll end up at your current topic by the end of this. All right. When I was 25, I was that moron kid who thought it was so important to get married. So I did it. Everybody told me I shouldn't. Everyone told me I was an idiot. Of course, I thought I was smarter than everybody. And so I did it. Biggest mistake I ever made in my life. No, actually, it was followed by, followed on by other infractions. I ended up getting her pregnant a couple times and lived with this woman for 15 years in misery, absolute misery. Bought her the Chanel, bought the nice cars, took her on these expensive vacations, and she treated me like crap. Finally, I got sick and tired of it, divorced her. Gave her a huge settlement, $100,000 a year alimony and child support. Gave her a house. She continued to treat me like crap for another five years. Just absolutely made my life miserable. So what I did is I finally got sick of it, and I started taking it all back. Spent three years in the court system. Got custody of all three kids back. Got all the child support back. Got all the real estate back. Got all the alimony back. And her with just nothing and now she's out at these bars in the OC doing exactly what you're talking about she thought she was going to treat me like crap now I'm rolling down the freeway in my Maserati living at the beach got an incredible job and she's got nothing and if your listeners want to take a piece of it they are welcome I love it <laughs> well it's because you got already myself a 30 year old woman who treats me like a king who takes care of my kids like nobody's business and I couldn't be happier. Well, you know what I always anyway. say. I always I always tell an analogy, uh, Bill. Uh, uh, my first luxury car was a 1997 Lexus LS 400. And when I bought that car, I was so excited to have it because it, if you've ever been in a Lexus, the intoxicating smell of that leather is over the top. Yeah, and you step on the gas, and it's like a rocket ship. The first time you ever get in a car like that. And I'm like tooling around town with the windows all tinted, and I had a black on black car, black leather, black tint, black, black, black. And I'm, I'm tooling around town with this unbelievable Mark Levinson stereo system, and it was fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Two years after I bought it, though, you know what? I had this idea. I'm going to trade it in and upgrade. So I got the newest 
Lexus. The at the time the 1999 Lexus LS 400. Yeah, I'll be financed it too. Yes, and later, well, no, I had no no lease. I I own these cars and traded them in and just added a little more cash and moved up the line. Later, I got the 2001 LS 430. And finally, the 2005 LS430. Now, why do I tell you this story? Because tonight, as I speak to you, there's a man out there driving my 1997 LS400. <laughs> and he's he he's saying, seats are a little saggier. Seats are a little saggier. The the leather smell is gone. Uh, the car probably has various uh, problems. It squeaks and grunts and. Uh, but the thing is, the guy's driving around, and he, this is as close as he's going to get to a Lexus. It's a Lexus. It's just an 11-year-old Lexus. So he's driving my car. Do I care that he's driving my car? Do I feel bad about it? Hell no. no. Hope he, he enjoys the ride. Hope you enjoy it. But there's a guy out there right now. That's all he can. That's the best he can do. Yeah, well, and, I'm not driving it anymore. Just like what it, whoever's driving that bitch you used to be married to, <laughs> yeah. that's Hope the he best he it. can do. So you, of course, are doing the best you can do, which is way better. Oh yeah. And Life she will she will take any attention she can get from anybody. Oh, absolutely. Anybody any she can get out of him. Are you kidding? Anybody who'll pay attention to her, buy her a martini, and she's yours. Yeah. Just like you probably get yeah. my old Lexus for ten grand, you know, or eight grand, or something like. You probably get it for that price. Probably good. But then, what are you gonna get? You're gonna get a broken down eleven year old car. Yeah, you sure are. I it'll be a Lexus, but it'll be an old car. I gotta tell all your listeners, you gotta pay attention to this man. He knows what he's talking about. I sure as heck wish I was listening back when I was twenty five. But it is very painful to undo the mistakes of youth. Very painful and expensive. Costs you a lot in lawyers, but just listen to Tom. He's steering you right. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Appreciate the call. Tom. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. So, for you, you only get some woman you sex, and that's it. Yes, because that's what women are good for. Oh, my God. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. At one 800 800 tom coming to you from Hollywood. Diane, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. Yes. Well, the reason I'm calling is because, you know, I'd like to know how you have fared through the years. Well, having money, power, and fame, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, it makes it very it easy. to do with money. I'm oh, yeah, it does. Yes, well, it does. No, no. Physically, in your opinion. Oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a minus same, one. Do you look the same as you did 20 years ago? It doesn't matter. I'm a minus I, one, but, I, but, but women want me more and more because of my money, power, and expanding fame. That's well, what I they want. Call those females women, if that's well, right, uh, yeah, if they have a you. vagina and it's available, they're women, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, well, and if they're hot and younger than you, like your daughter's age, I'm in. Well, the point, is, the the reason I'm calling Tom is because. You want to criticize women for getting older? No, and, I'm not criticizing women for getting older. I'm, I am I'm celebrating it. I'm 44 years old. And You're how I old? Think you're 44. You sound 64. Well, no, 44. Maybe it's your ears. Maybe it's your Oh, old yes. Ears. It must be my old well. ears. Yes. Yeah. And so I take care of myself. I look presentable all the time. Presentable? I, and, I well, fine. Sit. But I'm, I'm curious to know what you might look like. I already answered your question, dear. So oh, you don't, don't want to answer it. I answered it. I'm, I said I'm a minus one. How, how much are you? How, how much more can I degrade you? myself? I said I'm a minus what one. Hey, you, do you have any new material? Is that all you're going to say? Because if you're going to repeat the same thing over and over, if you, oh, I, I, yeah, well, just because the shoe fits a little too well, just because the glass slipper fits, Cinderella, doesn't mean you should get so upset. Pipe down. You probably look like a troll. Uh, it doesn't matter if I look like a troll, because guess what? I'm a rich troll who can get younger and hotter women than you. Well, if that's all you have to offer is your money, that's pretty pathetic. I, I don't offer my money. They don't get my money, you old bag. 
Yeah. Oh, you're getting pretty personal. Am I touching on a uh, uh, sensitive subject? Not in the least. Tom? Not in the least, darling. Because you know okay. what? If, if, if it were bothering me, I'd put a couple of hundred dollar bills in my ears and it would block out the sound. Well, your money really means nothing. Well, of I course it doesn't, I because you, you couldn't that. get a man with and money if you, you tried. Really know that deep down, you Tom. couldn't get a man with money if you tried, because nothing. you're now over okay. the hill. You're spoiled milk. I don't think so. Men age like fine so. wine. Women age like milk. No, no. Oh Not yeah! Really. Oh yeah! You know oh yeah! You. Oh yeah! That's how it works, darling. Okay. You you had your day of being a little bitch, and now you can't get away with what you used to get away with anymore. Oh, sorry, that's the only type of girl that you can attract, Tom. Um, darling, I don't attract bitches. Believe me, the women who I attract appreciate me for who I am and what I've accomplished. And the reason is because well, I never, I never, because I get. never okay. give them the keys Everybody to the vault. Me. Apparently, real women... Hot hot young time. chicks who put out. That's what I attract here. Okay. Hot young chicks who put out. That's what I attract. Well, answer me. Oh, the last 20 you, years... Are you going to answer... If you ask the same question, are you no, going to ask... Answer it. Answer the question. Do you look the same now as you did 20 years ago? Again, darling. I, again, darling. You're I not any... You are you going to ask that question again? Ago, are you going to ask that question again? Are you going to ask that question again? Are you going to ask that question again, dear? Are you going to ask? See, this is exactly what yeah, men okay, like me are trying to avoid. Yeah, Having a list of shrill, know, shrieking know, shrews like you. Bug-eyed, gray-haired, crow's feet, women with menopausal okay. mustaches like you. That's exactly. I'm so glad she called in because that's exactly what I'm talking about. Listen how bitter she is. Her day has passed. Listen how angry she is. I've got her number, and that's what's driving her crazy. She's exactly what I'm talking about. The little princess, the little queen, the little queen bee, the little bitch who said no to everybody and made little demands and batted her eyelashes, and now she's an old bag and can't get anybody to do anything, and she's jealous of the younger, hotter chicks who come along to take her place. She'd love to be dating guys my age. Guys my age who have money, power, and fame, we wouldn't look twice at somebody like that. We look right down the food chain, right down to the women in their 20s or their late teens. That's what we look like. 18, 19, 20, that's what we're looking at. 20, 25, 28, that's what we're looking at. We're not looking at old bags like you. If you want to date a guy uh, my age, you're going to end up with, uh, if you're lucky, the Roto-Rooter man. And I don't mean the guy who owns the company. I mean the guy who sticks his hand to the toilet. That's all you can get now, sweetheart. You old bitch. That's all you're going to get. There's a guy who sticks his hand down the toilet and pulls feces and toilet paper. And your old, well, I'd say your old tampons, but you'd have to reach down a few years because you haven't used a tampon in a long time. And pulls that, that, that mess out of your toilet and unclogs it. That's the kind of man you're going to attract. Absolutely. <laughs> it was so rewarding getting her calling up and screeching so, such a shrill manner like that. Because she's exhibit A. She's exactly what I've been talking about. you kidding me? With her nipples pointing south? The stretch marks from those kids that she had that don't talk to her anymore? That little fupa pouch that she carries around for when you have a kid and you can't get rid of it? All the ab crunches in the world, you can't get rid of that little pouch? And there she is with, you know, Playtex girdles or whatever, trying to hold it all in. <laughs> and she's bitter about guys like me with the young, taut 24-year-olds. <laughs> God, I love it. She's so bitter. <laughs> I love hearing that. Just amazing. Keep it up, dear. Have another Tom Collins or another highball and enjoy it. So the spritzer, that's right. Ooh, Trish. I can't wait to get this call. Trish on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, um, Tom, I just want to tell you that, you know what? Um, 
Hello? If you were a celebrity, I don't believe that there would be any woman that would I die. wanted to talk because to the host of the show. Actually, you actually pay for it one way or the other. If you don't do I it, I think I've heard you before, darling. The only reason they go out with you is because of the fact that how old are you, dear? To meet someone else. Dear, how old are you? What year were you born? Do you remember uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, darling? You know what? You get you get a big kick off. Of, Herman you know, Hoover. He's one of the, the great presidents of our time. Uh, Very uh, underrated. You know what? It's the reason you're no expert because you've been married. Listen, how angry and bitter you are! Oh my God! But you talk to me like I'm your ex-husband or something. You were married to Kitty. You you all. She's still going. This is a this. What is that noise in the background there, dear? Did you leave your car door open? What is it? Did you press your Did you press your life alert button? What is that noise in the background? Is that, is that the clapper malfunctioning? What is that? I'm in my car. You're in your Crown Vic right now. What are you? you what are you rolling in? In a Jag. You're not driving a Jag. Not even in your dreams. I swear. God, not I even. Not jet. yeah. You know what? Fine. Get your Polaroid camera out there and take a picture of it and set and mail it in, will you? Hey, send it via Pony Express. You old bag. Here. You dried up old bag who lied to Dean to get on the air, but he knew you were lying and he put you through anyway, just so I could have fun with you. No. You know what? Just so I could make your life a living hell. Listen how angry you are. Listen how bitter you are. What you get that from uh, one of your ex husbands? You, know you probably took it from an ex-husband in a divorce. Listen to you. I understand why you don't... Oh, a bitter old prune like yourself. I'm sure you're very understanding. Hello? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> See, another... another. She's Exhibit B. We had Exhibit A, and now we have Exhibit B. And you promised... Are you crying, darling? You sound awfully emotional over there. So ugly. My goodness. You and everybody in the card room there at the condominium complex. There you are playing Mahjong with the girls, and now you decide to call a radio show. Uh, no. Actually, you know what? I've never listened to your show ever before. No? I listened it um, because someone was talking about it, and so I thought, shoot, I want to know what to Johnny, I want to I recommend, recommend a station for you. Tommy, I want to recommend a radio station. It's KFI AM 640. That's a station for bitter old broads like yourself. Oh, my God. Listen to her. The Tom Likas Show.